Hey everybody, welcome back to Harl's Garage. To ring in the new year, I'm excited to show you guys my new project. I purchased this 1982 BMW 320i for $400 from an estate sale to turn it into a rally car. This E21 is the first generation of BMW's iconic 3 Series. However, my BMW is a little worse for wear and has sat for over 20 years. So in this film, I'm going to clean up the car and see if we can get this classic Bimmer to at least turn over. I had the car towed to my buddy Andrew's house so we could start the cleanup. First thing was to tackle the wheels, because there's a strong possibility that I'll end up with a larger wheel setup later down the road. Rather than refinish these 13 inch turbine wheels, I opted to give them a good cleaning. Even with my impact in hand, it took me a bit of time to break the torque on these rusted bolts. With the wheels off, it was easier to see that they weren't damaged, just corroded and dirty. I then had a local tire shop fit the cheapest set of tires on the wheels so that in the meantime, we can get the car up and running. To clean the wheels, I started with my pressure washer to blast the dirt away. To get some of the tougher dirt and corrosion off, I used Jack Swack's Ultimate Wheel Cleaner Spray. And after a few minutes, you can see how the wheels started to turn a slight purple color. While not perfectly clean, I was satisfied with what a little elbow grease can do. Next, it was time to tackle the years of moss, dirt, and grime buildup on the E21's body. With some multi-purpose cleaner and degreaser, Andrew and I started by spraying the bulk of the grime off the body of the car first. And it was pretty satisfying watching all that dirt and moss literally just melt away. We even carefully cleaned what we could out of the engine bay with the pressure washer as well. Andrew was careful not to hit any of the rubber or electronic components that had been sitting for two decades. We then finished the exterior detail by using soap from my foam cannon and a hand wash to remove any more contaminants from the surface.
While the power wash uncovered what flaws were hidden under the dirt, especially the heavy paint chipping and damage on the front bumper and hood, I was pleasantly surprised that the rest of the body and paint was in relatively good shape considering that it is nearly 40 years old. I'm not going to lie, I actually really like this BMW Safari beige color as well. I then moved on to the absolutely disgusting interior. The car had set forever, so there was plenty of mold and dry rot inside. Additionally, there were some signs of rat infestation as well. Off camera before I even got started, I had sprayed the entire car down with a bleach solution to help prevent catching any illnesses like the Hatana virus. With the respirator on, I began pulling things apart. And as you can see, I Whoops. well carefully <laughs> removed everything, including the door cards. The only thing I was going to save was my dash. We even removed the AC, because a race car doesn't need air conditioning. With the interior removed, it was time to see if we could figure out if the BMW would start or not. However, immediately, Andrew noticed that the battery leads were pretty much shot. Luckily, Andrew had some spare leads from a Mustang so he fabbed up a solution so that we could get power to the BMW. With the new leads and a fresh battery installed, we first tried with some starter fluid to see if we could get the engine to turn. And, wouldn't you know it, the BMW briefly fired up. We continued to try to get the BMW to fire on its own. However, Andrew quickly realized that we weren't getting any fuel to the motor. Although, my wiper motor still worked. So Andrew decided to disassemble the fuel pump. After some more careful disassembly, we quickly found our issue. The fuel that it was left sitting in the tank for over two decades had varnished over, creating a disgusting sludge inside the tank. Looks like I'll have to order a new fuel pump from Germany. There's your problem. Yep. 
Now the fuel tank isn't my only issue on this car. There's plenty of work to be done all around. So be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on future episodes and the progress we make on this rally car build. We'll see you next time.